Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking the wooden floor material from the previous tutorial and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the files we'll need for this video. We're going to need the floor smudges type A medium 001 uh, overlay and gum scratches 003 both of which I already have downloaded and I'll be including a link to them below the video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. We, uh, If you remember, we brought in our wooden floor material. In fact, our material converter did the, the majority of the work um, and we made a, a slight adjustment to the uh, gloss map um, to make our floor a bit more shiny. The problem is it's looking a little bit clean. Um, in the real world, nothing's clean. There's always smudges, scratches, marks, wipes, grime, everything. Um, and, and to create a really realistic render, you do need to, to, to bear that in mind. So yeah, we're going to be adding some smudges and scratches. Before we do though, I just want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're gonna be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be, the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go into the material, bring up the shader graph again, um, and if you remember from last time, we actually added in this color composite node, um, and then the white value here was basically the the strength of our of our gloss map, um, or it, in fact, it's been inverted at this point into a roughness map. Um, so with the value all the way set to white, uh, we had our original roughness map, and then all the way down to black, uh, it gave us kind of a, a mirror-like reflection, uh, and we decided on a value around 70, 65%. Um, and it's this area that we're going to be working on now. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, cancel that, <laughs> uh, drag these nodes out a little bit, and just give us plenty of room to work with within this uh, shader graph. So let's start by bringing in our smudges texture. Go. Yeah. Okay, so on my hard drive, oh, I've actually got the, the folder open, that's handy. Um, you, you've got a, a, a couple of options you could choose from. I'm gonna go with this overly 16-bit. Now we have a 16-bit texture, and um, there's more color depth, and in the, in, in terms of an overlay, it just means more detail um, from this texture. So let's bring that in. Um, you can then choose to override the gamma, which we might actually want to do, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. Because as a general rule, um, any textures that contribute towards the color of a material, um, you would want those to go through all the the gamma corrections at render time, yeah? So you'd set that to sRGB. Um, if they do not contribute towards the color, like a uh, an overlay like this, but also roughness maps, displacement maps, normal maps, um, things like that, you would not want them to go for any gamma correction, so you'd override that. Um, but it might actually be doing that on its own. So I'm going to leave that as is for now and uh, we'll we'll figure out if we need to change that. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got our texture in and now we need a way to introduce that into our roughness map, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna add in another composite node, like so, and then move it over here, create a bit more room, there we go. And now I'm gonna feed our original roughness map into the base color of this composite, and then the out color, I'm gonna put into the reflection. And before we go any further, I'm just gonna name a few of these nodes so we don't get confused. So this is our roughness adjust, and this is our smudges um, 
screen. I'll explain why I'm calling it screen in a minute. And this is our smudges texture. Okay, so that makes a bit more sense when we when we go back to it later. So let's feed the smudges into the blend color there, like so. And then within the composite node, I'm going to change the uh, composite mode to screen. Now what a screen does is provide a really really good way of taking the brighter areas from a texture and overlaying them on top of an existing texture. So in this case it's going to take the bright areas of our smudges texture, i.e. the footprints and smears and whatnot, and overlay them on top of our original roughness map. Yeah. So with that in place let's do a quick render and see what we get. There we go. So now we can see a, a whole bunch of, uh, of smudges on our floor and it's looking pretty good. Um, we do need to make a few adjustments. One, the smudges are, are too strong. Uh, and two, they're not really scaled correctly. Um, if you look at the size of the, the floorboards, the feet would be really quite small. So unless this is a floor that a lot of children have been running around barefoot, <laughs> we, we, we need to make some adjustments. So let's go back to our shader nodes. Here we go. And see what we can do about that. Well, first of all, we've got the scaling. If I go into this texture, you've actually got a remap um, option here. Yeah. So we could change this to say, we want to make them smaller. Yeah. So we want the scale to go down. So about a 0.7, I think, will work pretty well for us. There we go. And then for the other problem, for the strength, we're basically going to duplicate exactly what we did with our um, our little color composite adjust node for the roughness map. So I'm going to bring in another color composite, connect up the smudges texture, put the output into our point where the smudges gets mixed in, and this now uh, will act as the strength for our smudges. So let's call it smudges adjust. And I'm going to change the blend type to uh, multiply. There we go. Um, and as I explained in the last video, a, a multiply operation literally just multiplies the the source. So if it's set to black, that's the equivalent of, of zero. And if you multiply something by zero, you get nothing. Um, so at this strength, we'd see no smudges whatsoever. At the maximum strength, white. Uh, i.e. 1, we'd see the exact result that we had before. So if we turn that down to say 50% I think, I think that will give us quite a good result. But let's put that to the test. Not bad. Yeah, we might want to up the strength just a little bit. I think we've gone just a little bit too subtle there. Um, but I can see the, the the scaling is definitely looking a bit better. So, um, oh, just hit render again. Don't want that. <laughs> so let's uh, go back into the material and make some small adjustments. I, do, I, I think that scaling will work for us. I do, however, want to raise this quite a bit. There we go. Let's try it now. Yeah, that's looking quite good. Possibly still a, a little bit too strong. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I think we'll leave that there for now. Okay, so yeah, we've now got smudges. The next thing to add is our um, our scratches. Yeah. So the part that that's going to affect is the normal map. Yeah, because that's the the height information for our material, and we want to add to that. So let's start by bringing in a texture. There we go. And we'll call this one scratches because that's what it is. And then find our scratches file. In my case, it is here. And I'm going to pick the same one again, the overlay 16. Okay. Right, so now we have our scratches texture in, and like before, we now need a way to introduce that into our normal map. So, we don't, we need to do two things. First, I'm going to type in bump, because <laughs> that will give us both the uh, the nodes we need. We need a bump map node, first of all. 
And this is to tell Redshift that the scratches texture contains height information, like so. And it will also allow us to uh, control the strength of our bump map, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. The other thing we need is a bump blender. Now what this does is allow us to import our original, or input I should say, our original normal map, which I'll now feed into the bump input, there we go, of the material. Um, but it allows us to, you can see all these layers here, it allows us to add in additional height information, which is what I'm going to do now. There we go. Right, so um, we need to make a couple of changes in the bump blender first. We need to change it to additive mode. Now what that means is the new height information will be added to the original one. Without the additive mode, it would be more of a mix. So if I were to turn up the weight uh, to, to to max on layer 0, our scratches would completely replace the, the height information from our normal map. And we don't want that. We, we want to retain it and just add to it. So additive mode. Um, and then make sure the strength is at 1. And that's it. We, the, the bump blender node's finished. And the bump map node is where we'll control the strength. But before I do that, I want to demonstrate something. So I'm going to hit render again. And we'll see quite a, quite a hideous result. <laughs> um, but it's showing our scratches are in the right place. Uh, and it's also a good point to adjust scaling if we need to. But I actually think the scaling will work out quite nicely as is there. So we'll leave that. But the problems we do have is one, the effect is way too strong, way too strong. Um, but also, it, the scratches are bumping out of the floor. If you uh, look at, say, some of these ones in the middle here, you can, in fact, some over here as well, you can see them almost casting a shadow that they're bumping out of the floor that much. And we want them to cut into the floor, okay? And all of this can be fixed via this bump map node. So this height scale is where we're going to be doing our work. Now if I were to change this to negative one, now the scratches would be bumping into the floor. Um, I won't demonstrate though, but they, they would be. Um, but the, the effect would still be too strong, yeah? So we, we need a negative value, but uh, with a, a lot less strength. So I'm going to go for negative 0 0.05, okay? And give that a render. And even that's a tad too strong, but yeah, yeah, it, pre it's a, it pretty much uh, does the job in terms of a tutorial. So yeah, we've added in our smudges and scratches and our floor's looking a bit more realistic. So in summary, we've taken the wooden floor material from the first video and added in some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. 